Hey, hey, hey. Okay, I wrote this thing, and it's important to me, and I find that it's very, very valuable, helpful tool, so I want to actually read you what I wrote. And I'm a little bit under the weather. I'll get back. I'll bounce back. It's fine. A little cold. <coughs> if I cough, I apologize in advance. No big deal. I have found over many, many decades that this bastardization of this ancient Buddhist koan, be compassionate but take no shit, is my way of getting it for me and allowing this concept to simplify my life. I hope it can simplify your life too. I want to hear from you. If in fact, <coughs> if in fact you find that this is valuable, do let me know. This is the idea. Be compassionate, but take no shit. It's right there. Okay. So, moving forward. There's a first step and then a second. Okay, I'm going to comment on what I wrote while I read it to you. The first step being be compassionate. The second step is take no shit. Okay, and I've often found that people try to think of this as one larger integration, often to their detriment, and I'm compelled to clarify here. That's why I wrote this thing, and that's why I'm recording this now. So, people trying to make one larger issue from this are going to find that it doesn't work that way. This doesn't work that way. First, you want to be compassionate. After which, once that action, actionable attempt, kind of is exhausted, and the exhaustion point is for you to determine, but do your best. This is your own due diligence, okay? So, this is a helpful tool when you're, try when you're not trying to meddle in other people's business, but when actually doing the best, doing your best, to remove confusion and simplify communication slash action, okay? This is not about you meddling in other people's business, okay? Don't be that idiot. You're not some kind of all that and a bag of chips solution for other people. You might think you are good for you, but they have lives and you need not try to inflict yourself upon them because that's not the way you need to puff yourself up, okay? When you're actually trying your best to remove confusion and simplify the communication slash, a slash action that's going on in and around your life, then <coughs> this can be a very helpful tool. So, who is this not for? Well, as I already said, control freaks and codependents who superimpose their own best interests upon others without asking if their opinions are even welcome and wished for. Okay, now we're getting into the whole idea of unsolicited advice versus solicited advice. Always do your best to have solicited advice. If people are asking your opinion, good. If people are not asking your opinion, then do not meddle without actually asking if they want to hear what you think. That way, they will give you permission. But there are often many times when I am busy doing my own stuff, I know what I'm doing, I just need to get there, and I have zero interest in someone else telling me what I ought to do. So when they come up with unsolicited advice, I stop them right there and say, first of all, I didn't ask you. So feel free to ask. But do not tell me another thing because I'm not interested in hearing your opinion about what you think I ought to be doing. Because you didn't ask. And then, if they ask me, I might say, sure. But I also might say, no. Thanks for asking. Go away. My life, my shit, my rules, my way. I don't need anybody to, like, inflict their own sense of what I ought to be doing because it makes them feel good. No. You see, here's the thing. It's a big hint. Keep your unsolicited advice to yourself, and then ask politely if your input's wanted. 
Once it is, you can step in and become part of someone's thing. But do not assume that. Do not make some big, broad gesture just because you think you can hop in. When people hire you, people hire me to do all sorts of things for them, at which point I am that guy, and I have been asked to step up and do that, and even then I may want to clarify that I am about to describe a particular thing, so I introduce the topic at hand, so I can keep the thing in context. Good. Move forward. Firstly, always do your best to patiently attempt to solve issues for people with a sense of empathy and compassion. Okay? Assume they're coming at things honestly and with good intent. There's a reason for that. There's a few reasons for that. You cannot always find the patience to be that version of yourself. But, I'm going to go back into a little riff here. You should assume that they're coming at things honestly and with good intent. You want to be the person who makes the right assumption about the situation so that you are coming at it from a healthy standpoint. And in so doing, you will actually abandon all of the negative baggage that you bring with your personal agenda and your storyline slash history of what you think about you know that person the situation your own life whatever it is it's like waking up on the wrong side of the road you know bad wrong side of the road <laughs> okay so you cannot always find the patience to be that version of yourself that's the way life happens sometimes you don't come at it the way you wish you did but do not beat yourself up for not being better at this than you are at that moment okay you are doing the best you can, and if you come at it thoughtfully, good. That doesn't mean you're going to do a great job at it. You're not always going to be stellar, even though you know the way you ought to be doing it, whatever that is. <coughs> Let it go. You can apologize. If you're with somebody, family, friends, whoever it is, and you make an error, you behave poorly, improperly, badly, you will yet live again to have another conversation, and you can even revisit that and apologize. But don't keep apologizing and prostrate yourself, you know, for them time and again. Just, you know, do it once and get over it. That's fine. Just keep trying to remind yourself to assume the best of people. That will be a thing that, like all else, comes with practice. You work with practice, you move forward, you do the best you can. Good. So this is a nice, optimistic, and kind approach to start with. Here's the issue. It enables you to think well of the world. You are priming your own ability to be that better person by thinking in that better way. This attitude can also facilitate betterment in your own daily, sometimes as well. Because you can get yourself out of whatever funk you may be in by feeding the other nicer beast within. Okay? You know this. The whole idea of there's this battle inside you for the, you know, two beasts. One is the better beast and one is the evil beast. <laughs> and which beast, you know, which beast will win that battle? The one you feed more. So, if you walk around with all sorts of negativity and nastiness and regret and resentment, then you will, of course, be and, be and continue to become that person, that version of yourself. If, however, you feed the other side and you focus on the betterment, then you will see the results by becoming the better version of yourself. So... You know, this is a nice, optimistic, kind approach to start with. It enables you to think well of the world. It's true. S watch it work for you. It will. If you practice it, don't start and make mistakes and then beat yourself up at it. Just move forward into it, gradually getting better at it. The beast within has many sides, and you'll be the one you nurture more often, just like I said. Okay, so here's the thing about other people. People are going to try your patience. 
but actually a lot of it is your own personal agenda you bring, so try not to place the brunt of the blame on others. Don't blame them for just being themselves. In fact, take equal responsibility, and, step further, consider shouldering even more of it. Because that's the stuff you can actually do something about. You see, you can only work with the responsibility you give to yourself. You cannot do anything about the situations with other people if you place the responsibility squarely on them. When they don't pony up, disappoint, don't do the right thing for you, don't do what they said they were going to do, don't, you know, fulfill some responsibility slash obligation slash promise to you, you can stop that with this be compassionate but take no shit co-op. Because they are only trying to negotiate, navigate their way through the world. And if they don't do it according to what you need, then you can change that. So this brings us to the second aspect of this koan. Take no shit. Okay, once you've exhausted the first section, now we're into the second section. Once you've exhausted the library of workable, viable, and actionable attempts to be that compassionate better self with someone slash anyone stepping into your realm as they tend to do, you no longer owe someone else anything more, at which point they no longer deserve your time on this particular situation. Sometimes it's a full larger thing. Maybe they don't deserve your time anymore in life at all. You can cut them out. It doesn't matter. But the size of the issue, whatever that is, you no longer owe them anything more once you have exhausted all of the aspects of being compassionate and then you get to move forward in your life. Okay, here's the understanding. Yes, this may be through no fault of their own, but it is squarely up to you, and you must take responsibility the, res the responsibility on yourself. Do not hold a grudge toward them, since they are only trying to get what they want out of the world. Okay, they are trying to just live. It's not about assuming that they're in your way. <coughs> <clears throat> remember about feeding the you know feeding the good beast versus the bad beast within if you sit there thinking that everyone is in your way you will actually make more things feel like they are in your way you will highlight all of the times that you are being made to wait and slow down and you will see it as an obstacle you will see the world as an obstacle if you see someone else as being in the way and you spend lots of time focusing on that, you're actually occluding your own ability to move forward. So let it go. Okay, they are only trying to get what they want out of the world. They are only trying to get what they want out of the world, just like you. You are too. Cut them some slack. Cut yourself some slack. They're not trying deliberately to be in your way. Some people are, at which point you can just, you know, recognize it for what it is and get to straight to the take no shit situation. Okay. And yet, if they are unequipped or ill-equipped to receive your best attempts at positive problem solving with or for them, you must bring the hammer down gently yet firmly. Okay. I don't care how gently. I just know it has to be firm. You have to lay, the, lay down the new rules. Okay, this is done. I'm done with this. I'm not focusing my energy on this. No more explanations. No more beating a dead horse, okay? That brings us to the next section. You do not need to inform them too much of what you're now up to because they no longer need to take up any more of your time. Explanations include them and continue the time wasting. You need not continue to explain delicately, ever so gently, why you're moving forward. No. 
say you're moving forward and get on with it, okay? The more explanation you try, they are going to try to drag you back, and you can take their bait or not. That's your problem. But if you want to make it not a problem, don't take the bait. Resist the time-wasting. Resist the inclination to perpetuate the long, slow denouement of said discussion slash interaction. Resist the inclination to perpetuate the long, slow denouement. Yes, denouement. If you don't know what it is, go look it up. You have Google. You don't need to spend lots of time discussing it. Okay? You make a solid choice to refocus on your own essentials and place a label upon them and their shit. And that label is avoid distraction. Avoid distraction. Avoid distraction. If they become part of the distractions, you can avoid the distraction and they become something in the category of stuff to avoid. Now, it doesn't have to be them. It just has to be the situation. Focus forward, move on, okay? So it goes from being something you focus on with compassion and you do your best, after which you're done. And then it is no longer to be dealt with as compassion, but firm, solid conclusion of we're over. This is finished. We are. I am not going to be dragged down and in to this again because I have now made a decision. It enables you to simplify your life. Focus, know what you do need to give time to, and then make a decision about the things that you do not and do not revisit them. Remember, this is your life. Do not empower others to control your life and your choices. I'm going to repeat that. Do not empower others to control your life and your choices. Include those you wish and learn how to draw the line. This koan, this sensibility, works for everyone in their own unique, individualized way. It works for me differently than it'll work for you. <coughs> when you try this and you fail, it's because you are a continuing work in progress yourself. Work at it. Find all of the limits. Find the ways to recognize and find the ways to be compassionate and then find the ways to draw the line and move forward and take no shit. I have found that this works greatly to my benefit in my life. I have found that it enables me to be able to be clear with people because I am clear with myself. The better and clearer and more effective I become in recognizing the aspects of this daily with lots of things in my life, the more I have found that I can simplify and ease my ability to navigate through life. I hope you can do the same. I hope this works for you. Be compassionate, but take no shit. Good luck. I want to hear what you think. I want to hear. Okay? See ya.